Hi, my name is Reagan Jeffries, and I will be discussing the epic poem Beowulf. Beowulf is the longest surviving English poem, and it was officially published in 1815. The author of Beowulf is unknown. I will also be dis I will also be discussing and comparing and contrasting Beowulf with the poem Attitude by Charles Swindle. Beowulf is set in sixth or seventh century Sweden and Denmark. In the beginning of the poem, we are introduced to Rothgar. Rothgar is king of the Danes, and he is a well-respected king. Rothgar decides to build a mead hall, and he names it Herod. Herod is a place of joy and happiness, but all of that soon comes crashing down when we are introduced to the demon-like creature Grendel. Grendel is a descendant of Cain, and he is truly wicked. And in the Bible, Cain is known for killing his brother because he was jealous of him. Grendel begins terrorizing the Dane kingdom. He was first drawn to Herod because of the joyous noises coming from it. Grendel would go into the meat hall each night and rip apart and eat the dating soldiers. This section of the poem I feel is melancholy because Rothgar is forced to sit back and watch helplessly as horror falls upon his soldiers and as terror invades his kingdom. But that is when we are introduced to Beowulf and we're, when we are introduced to Beowulf, he is introduced as a decorated hero and as the Prince of the Geats. He hears about the stories of the terrible monster Grendel, and he and a group of men that he chooses set out to go to the Dane Kingdom to help. When they get there, Beowulf introduces himself to Rothgar. Rothgar then remembers Beowulf's father. Rothgar had some time ago helped Beowulf's father with a war and felt as though Beowulf was there to help as a token of gratitude on behalf of his father. Beowulf then announced to Rothgar and the Dane Kingdom that he had planned to take on the monster Grendel. And he said that he would do so with no weapon because he knew that Grendel wielded no weapon and he was noble so he thought that there should be some fairness even if Grendel is a demon he thought that it wouldn't be fair if he fought him and Grendel had no weapon so he only used his hands but Beowulf did have the strength of 30 men Beowulf then goes to sleep that night, and that night Grendel comes in to inflict his usual terror, and that's when he and Beowulf fought. And Grendel then saw that Beowulf was not like other men, and I think for the first time he began to feel fear because he's so used to terrorizing, he didn't know what it felt like to be the one being terrorized. They, so they fight and they fight and Beowulf ends up defeating Grendel and Grendel loses because Beowulf rips off his arm and he's in agony. So he retreats and he goes back to his lair, but he was bleeding very, very badly and Beowulf knew that he would not last much longer. He was bleeding so badly to the point where he turned the sea, his blood turned the sea red. As a trophy, the Danes hung Grendel's arm in Herod, and the Dane kingdom began to rejoice because they no longer had to live in fear of Grendel. After that, a new threat emerged. The Danes began to worry about Grendel's mother. 
They ask Beowulf to go to her underwater fortress and defeat her. Beowulf decides to go face her. He swam to her underwater lair. And there he saw her and he saw Grendel laid out on what looked like a table or what seemed to be a table. And that was when Grendel's mother and Beowulf began to fight. But Grendel's mother was stronger and was also angry over the loss of her son. She had the upper hand most of the fight. Beowulf almost lost, but he had God on his side. He was able to grab a magical sword that was made by the giants and stab Grendel's mother in the neck. And before Beowulf, no human had ever picked up that sword. That kills Grendel's mother. And with that same sword, Beowulf goes over and cuts off Grendel's head. Grendel and his mother were not of this world. So the sword begins to melt away. And only the base of it is left. And Beowulf takes the base of the sword and Grendel's head back to the surface as trophies. After that battle, a time of peace came over the Dane kingdom and also the Geek kingdom. Beowulf is now king of Geeks and he had been for some time now. He is loved by his people. Then a dragon begins terrorizing his kingdom. This is when Beowulf begins to get a group of his best soldiers together to go into the forest and find the dragon. They do this. And when they find the dragon, Beowulf tries to use his sword against it. But the sword will not pierce the dragon. And the dragon begins to breathe fire. And it gets a hold of Beowulf. Beowulf is not the man that he once was. And he desperately needed the help of his men. But all of his men ran. They had never had to help Beowulf in battle before. So they all ran. All except one. And that was Wiglaf. Wiglaf admired Beowulf. And he went to help his king. And together they defeated the dragon. But Beowulf was already hurt very badly. When they got back to the kingdom, Beowulf was on his deathbed. And the soldiers that ran away felt very bad. Wiglaf wanted those soldiers to be prosecuted. And he was angry because they he blamed them for Beowulf being hurt. Beowulf made a few requests before he died. One of, it, one of them was for them to build a tower for him and to put his treasures in it. When he died, his kingdom was very sad. They were really going to miss their kind and caring king. Beowulf was truly an epic hero. Now I will be talking about the poem Attitude by Charles Swindle. The poem Attitude talks about how your attitude can impact your life and how important it is. It talks about how many, how many things in life are uncontrollable. The one thing that you can control is your attitude and the outlook you choose to have on life. Beowulf and the poem Attitude are actually very similar. An example of this is when in the poem it says, It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. This is definitely true to Beowulf because even though he has superhuman strength and fought and defeated these demons and monsters, his people remembered him as kind. He treated them well and had an overall positive attitude. A contrast between them, for me, is the realism. Beowulf is more accepting of things as they happen. What I mean by this is he believed that if something was supposed to happen, there was nothing he could do about it. It was, it was what it was. An attitude is a bit different. It's saying that if you change your attitude, other things in life will change as well. It's saying that you can control what happens to you, to you in life by your attitude. To wrap things up, I would recommend Beowulf to someone. I say this because it's because it is the first superhero type story of its kind. I find that very interesting. Beowulf is the backbone for the popular superhero comics and anything else like it, like Marvel and DC. It's the classic good versus evil, where good always reigns supreme. The poem is adventurous and action packed. I like that about it. 
Although it may be hard to read and understand, I still feel that it's very important. And once you finally understand it, the story is more interesting and you can appreciate it more. That's all I have. Thank you. Bye.